Welcome to Train Signal. You're watching Certification. It's really not that scary. So let's talk about what it is, what to expect, and how to prepare, especially if this is going to be your first certification exam. By now, I'm, I'm betting it probably isn't, or either that or you're watching all of the series uh, on the Server 2008 stuff, and you just haven't taken any exams yet. But I want to go through it real quick just so you know uh, what certification looks like, how to prepare for it, and I'll give you my top secret tips on how to take the exam. All right. In this video, we're going to talk about the new generation of certifications for Server 2008. I'll tell you about the upgrade paths for MCSAs and MCSEs, if you happen to be one of those already. I'll tell you how to sign up for a Microsoft exam, and I'll also tell you about uh, some exam prep tips, again, including my secrets on how I take all these crazy exams. And uh, just so you know, there is no MCSE 2008 or no MCSA 2008. There are three new server certification blocks for network administrators. You have the MCTS, and that's actually down here on this bottom level. This is where everybody starts at. And there are actually several different specializations that you can achieve including directory services, application infrastructure, like as this video is taking you through, uh, the network infrastructure stuff. So there's uh, several of those, and not only just are they for Microsoft Server, but there's also MCTS for SharePoint and several others. Now, in terms of the replacements, and Microsoft say, no, no, this isn't a replacement. No, it really is. What you really have here is you have the MCITP block, and it stands for Microsoft Certified Information Technology Professional. Now, the server administrator is more or less the equivalent of the MCSA 2008, and basically it focuses more on the overall server administration stuff. You don't have to worry about SharePoint and the application infrastructure for server administrator, or I literally should say, at least as much. <laughs> But for the enterprise administrator, this is kind of the whole enchilada right here. So this one is a little more comprehensive. And if you're looking to get to the enterprise administrator level, this uh, 7643 course is, of, of course, absolutely necessary for you, as you're going to find out here in just a little bit. But these here will put you essentially in this block over here, uh, the MCITP block. Then, of course, we have the Microsoft Professional Developer, which... Uh, is a whole different ball game. So, you know, we're not really worried about that one. We're just worried about the IT professional stuff, right? All right, so let's uh, talk about each credential, all right? First of all, let's talk about the MCTS, Microsoft Certified Technology Specialist. Now, you can take any one exam from a large selection to get an MCTS. Now, if you take a whole bunch of MCTS exams, then you can use Microsoft's Logo Builder and you can get kind of a nifty, more comprehensive uh, logo. Like this is the one that I built here recently to kind of show off some more some of my uh, specialties other than just the MCITP I have. So any one of your Microsoft exams for Server 2008 is going to get you your MCTS. All right, so that's the MCTS stuff. Let's talk about the MCITP Server Administrator. If you want to grab this one, uh, then you need to take three exams. The 7640, which is Active Directory, okay? And that's all about user accounts and whatnot. Uh, then you need to take TS Network Infrastructure, which is all about DHCP and DNS and all that network goodies. Then there's one other exam that you have to take, which is the 7646, uh, which is the Server Administrator exam, and that is the pro-level exam. Now, you can take these exams in any order, but you have to complete all three of them. So I know I've had a lot of questions in the past uh, couple months here about folks asking, well, you know, if I just take the 646, does that do the job? And no, it, it really doesn't. In order to get the server administrator, you got to take all three if you're doing it from scratch. Now, for the MCITP Enterprise Administrator, there are two additional exams. So you're going to have to take five exams. And first of all, you're going to have to have a VISTA exam. And you'll need to take the 7640, 7642, which I know these, uh, these are exactly the same, right, as the MCITP here. Then you're going to need to, need to take 643, which is, of course, uh, the video series that we're watching now, right, which is Application Infrastructure Configuring. And then you need to take the 7647 pro-level exam for the enterprise administrator completion point. So the biggest differences between these two exams are the VISTA configuration exam and the application infrastructure 
uh, configuration exam. So these two are the are really the defining factors. Now you could go ahead and take these three, grab your server administrator exam, take two more exams, and end up with an MCITP enterprise administrator. All right, so let's go ahead and let's uh, talk about the upgrade paths here from Microsoft uh, for an MCSA 2003. Let's say you got an MCSA 2003 and you want to move up to basically the equivalent, which is MCITP server administrator. You're going to need to take only two exams, okay? You need to take the 648. And what that's going to do is it's going to provide you with two MCTS certifications. It's going to provide you with the Active Directory configuration and the network infrastructure configuration. So how about that? You get two certs with only one test. Then you still need to take the pro level test, which is the 7646, which provides you the MCITP. So pretty simple from an MCSA 2003 to move up to an MCITP server administrator for server 2008. Let's talk about if you are an MCSA 2003 and you want to get the Enterprise Administrator. So let's say that you have been working with this stuff for a while and you feel, hey, let's uh, go ahead and jump all the way up to the Enterprise level. Well, you need to take 648, which provides those two MCTSs. You need to still take the VISTA exam. And by the way, I probably should mention this, for the Enterprise Administrator, whether you're upgrading or not, you could also take... 7624, which is actually deploying Vista. So, yeah, something kind of interesting there. You'll need to take 643 and then 647. So, what really what you'll really gain if you are already an MCSA 2003 is you get to skip one test, okay? All right, let's talk about MCSEs now. So, if you're an MCSE 2003 and you want to go over to the uh, Server 2008 Server Administrator side, uh, you only need to take two tests you need to take 649. 649 is actually going to provide you with three Microsoft Certified Technology Specialist certifications. It's going to provide you with Active Directory, Network in Infrastructure, and Applications Infrastructure. So if you're gunning for that particular exam, by the way, a lot of material in this course, the Applications Infrastructure course, uh, this will actually get you a lot of the information that you need. Uh, then you'll still need to take the Pro Level 7646. Now, if you want to jump up to the MCITP Server Administrator, if you are already an MCSE and you want to go ahead and get the equivalent of that in Server 2008, then you're going to need to take only three exams. The 7649 again, which provides you those three MCTSs. You're going to need, still need to take a VISTA exam to get your technology specialist in VISTA. And again, you can take the configuration or the deployment exam. And then you'll need to take the 7647 Enterprise Administrator level exam. Once again, take them in any order that you like. However, you still need to complete all three of them. All right, let's talk about how to sign up for a Microsoft exam. It's pretty easy. All you got to do is go to Prometric.com, and then you'll start over here. You'll select the test that you're going to take. So you go through Prometric sign up process on the web. Uh, it's real easy. You know, you don't need me to show you how to sign up for a test on the web. Trust me. Okay. Now, Prometric is the exclusive provider now of Microsoft exams. You should know that you can no longer take them with View. So this is the one place that you can go to take to sign up for Microsoft exams. Um, now, Microsoft periodically offers free second shot. Now, here's how that works. Okay? You go to the Microsoft website and sign up for the second shot, and they will provide you a voucher number in case you do fail the test the first time then you can use the voucher number that you receive from the second shot program to actually go back and retake the exam. So they, they try to alleviate some of the pressure every once in a while and it's it's a good it's a good program. So you know just watch the Microsoft website before you sign up for your exam. Okay, see if they're offering it at that time. All right, let's talk about preparation a little bit. And I wanted to recommend to you a book. And I think it's a pretty good book. It's not a book that you're going to want to read straight through. But the MCTS self-paced training kit uh, is available from Amazon, Barnes & Noble, you know, Borders, wherever you have a bookstore. I think we bought it here at this shop for like $39, I think, when it first came out. And it's, it's a really good reference book. So here's what I'm going to recommend to you. Rather than read it straight through, because a lot of the stuff that I've gone through on this video uh, is in that book. I've actually shown you more than what's in the book in certain places. 
And so you're probably going to want to use it more as a reference manual. Now included with this course is a Transcender Practice Exam. So one of the best ways to prepare for this exam is to take the Transcender Practice Exam several times and then the stuff that you keep missing, look up the stuff that you miss either in this video course or you can look it up in this Microsoft Press book that I'm recommending to you as a study aid. Uh, and you know, reviewing this course at least twice isn't going to hurt you, and that's for sure. You know, repetition will help bring this stuff more and more into your mind. So if there's a video that you're like, man, I'm just not sure I really quite got that, go back and watch it again. Um, but this is my perhaps my uh, my biggest recommendation to you. So I'll put a big old star by this here. Here's what I'm really recommending to you: get yourself some virtual machines. Okay, they don't have to necessarily have to be a Hyper-V machine. It could be Microsoft Virtual Server. Uh, there's a lot of free stuff out there that you can actually utilize from Microsoft. There's a free 120-day trials available of Microsoft Server 2008 that you can download free. But get yourself some virtual machines, install Server 2008, and try the stuff that I show you in this video series. Even if some of it blows up in your face, don't worry about it because you know what? You're getting into it. You're actually putting your hands on the machine and actually making stuff work. And that's a critical part of getting ready for the certification exam. Now, I know that's kind of a duh statement, but you'd be surprised how many people will go through a class, they'll buy a video, they'll buy a book or whatever, and then they'll never touch the actual machine or the actual applications. Well, uh, that's really not the best way to go about it. Okay, You really need to get in there, get your hands dirty, and get some stuff done. Now on the day of the exam, once you've done all your studying, once you've watched this course a couple of times, you've tried stuff out, and you've taken the Transcender Practice exams, you're feeling pretty good about the scores you're getting there, on the day of the test, first of all, do not stay up all night studying. Now I know this is going to be very tempting for you, especially if it's your first exam, but don't do it. Get a good night's sleep. If you go in tired, your brain will not be working with the same resources as it would if you had a good night's sleep the night before, okay? Also, when you go into the testing center, leave your cell phone and pretty much anything else in your car with the exception of uh, two forms of IDs, okay? Just so all you need to do is bring in two forms of IDs and your car keys. You must have two forms of your own identification, but that's all you need. Right? You don't need your wallet. Leave it in the car. Lock it. Leave your cell phone in the car. Lock it because if you bring it in with you, you're going to have to leave it at the front desk. They'll put it into a lock box or into a lock cabinet or something. But just bring in that stuff and, and that's all that you'll need. Uh, before you take the test, here's one of the biggest things I really recommend to you other than practice, practice, practice. Before taking your test, stop and breathe. Relax. Here's what's going to happen, especially if, you sh if it's your first exam and you're not stopping to breathe. You're going to see a question that you don't know the answer to, and you're going to freak out a little bit, and you're going to stop breathing. Why? It's what we do as people. It's what happens when we get afraid. Here's what happens when you stop breathing. The oxygen stops going to your brain. As a matter of fact, at, uh, at a previous job that I worked at, we had a, a, a testing center there on premises, and we actually had a guy pass out in the testing room, and it was uh, very embarrassing for him <laughs> to say that. So you need to make sure that you're breathing all the way throughout the exam, okay? And now, here is my secret. As you're going through your exam, go through the exam. If there's a question that you just have no idea about, you can mark that question for review the first time through. At the end of the test, you can go back and answer those questions you've marked for review later. So here's my strategy, and here is my secret to taking the exams. Don't feel like you have to do this, okay? I'm just telling you what I do. Here's what I do. I go through the test as fast as I can the first time. If I see a question that I have no idea what it's about or I'm going to have to think more than 30 seconds about the answer or maybe more than two minutes or whatever, however long I have for the exam, you know. But if I read through the question and I look at the answers and I'm like, wow, dude, I, I don't really know if I know that one. <laughs> you know, I'm going to think about it. I mark it for review and immediately go to the next question. And I do the exact same thing. Now, here's what that does for me. First of all, it gives me a sense of accomplishment when I find a question that I know, and it's like, man, I know the answer to that one. I hit the answer, and I move on to the next question. But when I get to the end of the exam, what I do is I count up the number that I have marked for review that I feel that I either don't know 
or I'm really going to have to stop and think about. And based on the number of questions and based on the estimated percentile, most Microsoft exams you have to get about a 700 or so. Some of them 750, but for the most part 700. So I figure that's probably about 70%. So if I sit down and I count up the number that I have marked for review, I divide that number by the number of questions on the exam, and if it is 85% or higher, and I feel pretty good about what I have, I go ahead and I just end the test. And you know what? I've actually only failed three Microsoft exams amongst, I don't know how many I've taken, 25, 30, something like that. Now, of course, I go in knowing my stuff, okay? But in terms of test taking, you know, I mean, I may rip through the exam only one time, and I may not go back and review any of the questions that I marked for review because I know that the questions that I answered right. Because if I only have, like, two marked for review, am I going to go back and answer those two marked for review? Uh, no. Now, listen, that's my strategy. If you do that strategy and you fail the exam, don't come crying to me, all okay? right? This is something that I do, and if you think it makes sense to you, try it out and practice it. Uh, if it doesn't make sense to you, and you're much more meticulous in this fashion, then don't do that. So it's a strategy, use it your own risk, but I've found great success with it. All right, uh, now the biggest tip that I can give to you is know your material. You have either passed the exam before you walk into that room or you haven't. You either know your stuff or you don't. Now, for the most part, on all of the exams that I've gone, on, gone in and taken, I've known my material. Okay? I've studied it, I've worked with it, I've implemented it four or five times over, but I know my material before I walk in the door. So I feel like I've already passed the exam before I even hit the uh, testing center parking lot. So know your stuff inside and out. Now obviously the video series that you've just watched is going to give you a leg up, but you also need to understand that Microsoft publishes its test objectives for a reason, and I've built this course based on the test objectives, as you know. I've tried to give you as complete coverage on the topics as I know them so that you'll do well on the exam, but you know what? There's no replacement for real live experience, even if it's just in a test lab that you have built in your basement on one old machine. You need to get your hands dirty. Get your hands on a copy of Server 2008 install it, install roles, install features, bang around on it, push buttons, blow it up, rebuild it, you know, and go at it again. Okay? And you know what? That's what I've done as I've, as I've prepared and built these courses for you. I sit down before I even start recording, and I practice each and every exercise. I go through them. I'm going to see if they're going to work. I'm going to see what needs to be tweaked. I blow up servers all the time before I start recording, and all I have to say is, Thank heavens for virtual machine snapshots. So virtualization is a great tool for you to learn with as well. So know your material, okay? All right, so after watching this video, you should be able to describe the requirements for MCTS and the MCITP tracks. You should be able to describe the upgrade paths from MCSAs and MCSEs to MCITP. You should be able to sign up for an exam on the Prometric website. It's not rocket science, I promise. So uh, you should be able to do that. And utilize the resources I have listed off for you there. And uh, to make sure, again, that you're, you're breathing during your exam. I cannot emphasize that enough. I think it's probably one of the keys to my success is that I let enough oxygen get to my brain during the exam. Okay? All right, friends. Uh, the next couple of videos, uh, I'm going to be going through some exam prep topics. And now, they're not really demonstration videos Really what they are are just to kind of give you a quick brush up on some core concepts that uh, are covered in the exam objectives. It's primarily just uh, just a quick theory based set of stuff. One of the videos actually is going to be something that if you're if you have a lot of experience in the field, uh, the uh, storage video, you know, if you have a lot of experience, skip the, the storage video. All right. If you know what a RAID 5 is and iSCSI and all that good stuff, don't worry about it. Uh, but the automated activation video is going to be pretty important to you, all right? Because there's some new stuff that Microsoft is doing with that that I want to talk to you about. All right, so that's actually the next video, automated activation. So let's go ahead and move on to that next video.